Welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to continue the teardown on this Caterpillar RD4 here. And I think we're going to pull the shift rails off today. And we're going to start seeing how much of that shaft, that upper shaft, wants to come out. If we get that out, we'll move into the lower shaft. We're kind of taking a break from the rear end for now. With it being this cold, that oil really won't drain out of the drain plug hole. The drain plug is actually out and nothing has moved yet. But we're supposed to get back into 60 degree weather here early next week. So we'll jump back into it then. For now, we're just going to focus on this transmission. So let's get started. So according to the serviceman's manual, this should be fairly straightforward and pretty easy. There's eight bolts here. Each one has a fold over lock. We'll get those flattened out. And then those eight bolts come out and you should be able to just lift the entire assembly straight off the shaft. Just using a small chisel there. I just open them up away from the bolt. Then I like to take a big punch and just flatten it out the rest of the way. And we'll repeat the same process on the other side. We'll come back over here, start pulling them bolts out. Okay guys, just to give you the best view that I can, I'm going to go to the other side of the crawler, leave the camera over here, and I'll try lifting that entire unit out as one piece, and get it over on the bench. Well, I know everything's still covered in oil, but that's the first real look we've gotten at the gears without any obstructions. Everything looks really good from what I can see, but it all still needs to come out. Let's keep working at it. Okay guys, back up in the bell housing area here. According to the manual, we need to pull, this is a seal cover plate, and then behind there is the plate that actually holds this shaft in. So we need to pull these five bolts, get that plate out of there. This key's gotta go 
they say this snap ring has to go. I think I can get that seal to go over there. We'll find out as we go. I think we need to get this key out of there. I tried driving it back with a brass punch to see if it would lift, and it would not. isn't my favorite method of removing them but it does work key actually looks to be in okay condition we'll assess it further once it's cleaned up I think I am gonna pull this ring off if I can get it off it looks like it it actually did want to move a little bit ago Let's see if we can pop that off of there with those front bolts broke loose by hand. Let's take the impact, bring them the rest of the way out here. I'm not sure how well you guys can make it out. It's kind of what we're looking at here. But if you look, there's actually a parting line right there at the tip of my finger. And there's another one behind it. These are two separate pieces. As I said earlier, this front one just holds a seal. The back one is what actually holds the bearing in this shaft in. At least, that's my understanding. We'll find out. So I was able to sneak my pry bar in here. And just catch that lip and there it comes so seal plate looks like a gasket or what was left of the gasket anyway that'll be garbage And now I gotta scrape this gasket material away. In here, there's supposed to be a couple of threaded holes that you can use to jack that shaft and this retainer plate away from this casting. So I'll do some cleaning up and I'll bring you back. Well guys, I'm kinda at a loss here. I scraped around there for quite a while and I haven't found any bolts or any threaded holes that I would use to pull these out. All I see for threaded holes is right there. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna see if I can get it to move maybe with a little assistance on the backside. Maybe I can get that bearing just to start moving and once it starts, I think we'll be all right. Okay, I was able to get it out this far. I just used a uh, heel bar to get in behind there and just slowly work it out just keep going side to side now I got a slide hammer I think I'll be able to get it the rest of the way out with that but I understand why cat put threaded bolts in the later ones uh, that might be a modification we do before we put this back together you guys ever tried to get something done and then they won't leave you alone Okay guys, there it is. Set that aside for now. Well guys, that was quite the struggle I really wasn't looking forward to tonight. Give you a 
look down inside the transmission here. So in the back here we have these tabs, the fold over locks, and four bolts. Caterpillar was nice enough not to put two in the bottom, so you can actually get to these. I believe when you pull these out, the whole shaft should come as one. We'll see how that goes. sure they weren't very tight. I don't even know if I'd call it snug. Well guys, I think I lost you. I'll have to go back and look at the footage here. Um, I was taking them bolts out and I seen the light on the camera was not working so uh, if I lost you, we'll just bring you back up to speed. Take them four bolts out. I got everything in the transmission parts bin here. We'll see if we can get that to move it all. According to the book, the reverse idler does not have to come out, which you can just see down in there. So I just wiggled on it just a little bit up and down, just where we took that input shaft out that connects to that coupler and I actually have a gap back here now and there's shims in there so I have to make sure we keep those shims where they where they belong I don't really think they would fit anywhere else but we'll just make sure they stay with this unit another thing I noticed there is a spanner nut back here and I know there's some in the rear end as well so I need to get a spanner wrench set ordered I don't have uh, I don't have anything over the years. I've only made tools to fit what I was working on at that time. But I think it's time to just buy a set. That way we're not fighting things further down the road here. So after consulting the book again, I found that these shims here are not full rounds. They're like a half moon. So what I'm gonna do is get them out of, where, out of there that way I can take a small pry bar and just assist. This grease is so thick, it's not letting anything move out or in for that matter. Okay, with these shims out, you can see it's just a stack of them here, but they're just a half moon. So with those out, I think I can get a bar just in here and just lightly help bring everything forward get free of that grease some more shims in there did not see those All right, the shaft is technically out. I think we need to push the gears back here because the front of the shaft needs to pass through where the input goes and the pinion will actually come out first. Or at least that's how they show it in the manual. Like so. There's a little bit of weight there. That is not light. Well, 
Well, with that shaft out, I'm back in the same boat of waiting for grease to drain before we can get that lower shaft out. So I know the videos have been shorter this week. I appreciate you guys following along. We'll keep going at it. It's just we're waiting on the weather to get a little nicer. So I've had a few questions on what we're doing with this crawler, what the overall plan is. I think the patina is too far gone in this crawler. We're down to rust. There's virtually no paint left. I won't feel bad about having the entire machine redone. So we're trying to get it stripped down so we can have it sandblasted early this spring. And from there, we'll paint it, reassemble, replace parts as necessary, clean and do a thorough inspection of everything. And we'll have a running unit. So thanks guys for following along. If you throw a like, I'd appreciate it. Subscribe if you want to. We'll catch you on the next one. Just a quick tip for you guys. An older gentleman showed me this years and years ago. Whenever you run into shims like this, and they have through holes in them, he always told me bolt them back together whenever you're storing them for two reasons. One, they don't get lost. And two, when they're bolted flat, they're stronger. The chances of an edge getting bent up or you know, catching on something and bending them, that chance goes way down because you have to bend that entire pack. So zip ties would work, you know, even mechanics wire, all that. Just something I ran across, figured I'd share.